Welcome to the second lecture of Networks, Friends, Money, and Bytes. In this lecture, we will try to formulate and answer this question: How does Google sell advertising spaces? Now, you must have used Google's search results, and indeed, in the next lecture, we will be looking at the PageRank algorithm that computes the order of the search results. But on a search page. Here's Google's bar. There are these search results that we'll talk about next lecture. There's also often an advertising space, shaded region on the right-hand side, with some so-called sponsored content. These are basically advertisements that tag along on a search result page. Sometimes they're even placed in the main panel on top. Now you may wonder what decides. Which advertisement shows up here, here versus here or here? Well, we have to go back a little bit and just think about the general space of online advertising, which reached 95 billion worldwide in the year 2012. And in this ecosystem, there are sellers, for example, Google, and there are buyers, which are the advertising companies. Back in the early days of the web, for example, around ninety four, ninety five, advertise advertisements on web were sold on an impression based、uh, mechanism. So as long as I show you an advertisement, then you got to pay me. For example, you know, fifty dollars per one thousand impressions. And then a company called GoTo, which later became Overture in ninety seven, introduced a different mechanism called click based. So if I just show you and no one actually click on it, then I won't charge you. But if I show this to people and then some of them actually clicked on it, then for every click I will charge you. Then along came Google in 1998 with the Google search engine. Then a few years later, Google introduced an auction-based mechanism to sell the advertisements on the search result page. It's called Google's. AdWords system, and anyone like you or me can go there and say, each time somebody search on Google's page for certain keywords,、uh, let's say、uh, burgers, then、uh, please link to my wonderful burger shop. Now the question is, you have to tell Google how much you're willing to pay for different spaces, and then Google will decide who gets what. So the very first question I have to answer is. Where will your advertisement appear? Now, of course, where it appears matters a lot. We all know how important the Google search results and the advertisements there are、uh, in driving the traffic to different websites. So, different spots on the given page have different values. We can summarize that value through a single number called C. This is a positive real number, and it is the expected. Click-through rate, since rate, so we're talking about how many per unit of time. For example, if C is eighty, means eighty clicks per hour, based on some historical data that、uh, advertisement placed at this spot would generate eighty clicks every hour. Of course, this is an expected; it's not necessarily the actual click-through rate when your advertisement is placed there. We also assume that this number C is independent of the actual ad placed there. Of course, some ads are just more attractive than others, so that will also impact C. But we'll assume that's not the case. Now, throughout this whole course, you see that whenever we say assume something, it means the rest of the sentence is an incorrect statement. That's why we call them assumptions rather than facts. But some assumptions will lead to still useful. Models and conclusions, whereas other assumptions would destroy the predictive power. Now, this assumption turns out to be not particularly bad. Okay, so now we know that we have a single number C for each advertising spot. It's called the expected click-through rate. The second question is, how do advertisers pay Google? So when you actually click, then the advertiser has to pay Google. But we'll assume that this actual click-through rate, let's say you know C 
one for the first hour your advertisements there c2 and so on they will just be the same as the expected click-through rate the third question is then what's in it for the advertisers they pay Google based on the click-through rate which we will assume to be the same as expected click-through rate and Google got a revenue stream that's good for it but what about the advertisers well presumably some people who look at the advertisement will actually click on it and some of those that click on it will actually buy the product or the service let's say 80 percent of the people who click will actually buy it and then each time they buy it you generate a ten dollar revenue then you multiply the two together you say eight dollar per uh, is the uh, average revenue in dollar uh, that I can expect from each click we call this number R it's the average revenue per click that you can anticipate now remember we just talked about another symbol C denoting the average number of clicks per hour so if you multiply the two together C times R this is the average click per hour this is the average revenue per click and therefore the total uh, count by this multiplication is the average revenue in dollars per hour and this is a very important quantity we'll come back to many times today called the valuation of this advertisement space to this buyer but different ad spaces have different C's and different buyers have different R's either because your product sells for different revenue or because the percentage of people you can expect among those who click the advertisement who end up buying it is different either way R will be different for different buyers but in any case the multiplication of these two numbers is the valuation so you may think maybe I should bid the valuation what we'll see if you do that we call that truthful bidding in an auction if you don't do that uh, then it's called non-truthful bidding what kind of auction will induce truthful bidding that is one of the main themes in this lecture we'll come back to that but first we have to define what is an auction so auction is a particular way to do resource allocation in a crowd or in a network in this case the resource is not a signal interference ratio like in last lecture resource in this case is uh, the list of advertising spaces and the allocation mechanism is auction now auctions have been used since over 2000 years ago it was used in Roman ancient Roman Empire and of course today it's used very heavily on platforms that we know all know like eBay in the US uh, and uh, Google's search uh, sponsored content so in these kind of auctions we have just one seller say so Google with n buyers and advertisers in K items say K uh, advertisement spaces we will first focus on the case of K equals to 1 which perhaps suits eBay uh, modeling better before we generalize to any number of items now these buyers then there are n of them will submit bids in an auction and then the seller will make two decisions the first is the allocation decision which item goes to which buyer if there's only one item then uh, where does this item go which buyer will get it and you may think whoever bids the highest should get it and that's indeed a very reasonable intuition we'll come to that in a minute and then the second decision you have to make is how much do you charge for that and this is where things start to get a little tricky even for a single item so let's take a look at some very uh, well uh, known kind of auction mechanism focusing on single item for now so I've got one item you want to sell through an auction let's say you have a public venue there's a podium there's auctioneer standing behind it holding the item 
and there is a crowd of people, potential buyers, sitting there. And then this auctioneer is going to say, "I got something I want to sell." Okay, I don't know who will get it. I don't know how much、uh, it will be charged. But let's go through the process. One possibility is the so-called ascending price, perhaps by far the most popular one. You've seen this in some movies or TV series for sure. The auctioneer will say, "Well, we start with ten dollars for this、um, you know, lamp, and each time you at least have to go above the current highest bid by one dollar. So please, let's get started. Ten dollar, anyone?" And then somebody says, "Yeah, ten dollar, me." And then the, another person says, "Eleven dollar, twelve dollars." And then somebody jump ahead and say, "Twenty dollar." Somebody jump ahead and said, "Ten thousand." At some point, a guy stand up and say, "A、uh, hundred fifty-five billion." All right, and nobody want to go up further. The auctioneer will say,、uh, "155 billion once, twice, three time." Okay, gone. This item is yours, and please give us the 155 billion dollars. So the highest bidder wins、uh, and pays the price whenever this auction stops. However, notice that that price, 155 billion, may not be the true valuation of this. Particular、uh, buyer, she might be willing to go even higher. She stops because no one matches that price, and that's a subtle but important point we'll come back to in a minute. There's a less popular version called descending price, where the auctioneer start with a big number. Okay, four billion dollars for this lamp. Anyone? Everybody silent. Then start dropping the price on some regular or irregular increment. A decrement, I should say, eventually goes down to all right. So this goes to one cent. Anybody? And then one person raises hand. Yeah. Okay, one cent for me. So I say, okay, you got the lamp and you pay one cent. And notice that in the descending price,、uh, when it stops, it actually matches the valuation of that particular user. All right. So that's public auction. But in many cases, you don't have a public venue. Or you have one, but you just don't want to use it.、Uh, in auctioning off many things, for example, government、uh, auctioning off municipality projects and so on, you use so-called sealed envelope. So here's the auctioneer, okay, and all these buyers standing here. They will each pass an envelope to the auctioneer, and the envelope has a number written on it. Okay, and then the auctioneer will say, "All right, I'm going to go back to my room, open." All the envelopes at the same time, and I see what are the numbers in there. Okay, ten, fifteen, twelve, and so on. Then I have to make the two decisions: a allocation. Well, I guess whoever bids the highest will get the item. We're still talking about single item right now. But then comes the more tricky part: how much should I charge it? You may say, "Well, charge whatever she wrote down in the envelope." That would be first price, but it turns out that first price is not necessarily a smart arrangement. We'll come to defining what is a smart auction, what's a good auction mechanism in a minute. But suffice to say that actually there is an alternative that most governments and corporations use. It's called second price. That is, she gets the item, but she pays not her own price. But the price of the second highest bidder, whoever that might be in this case, say twelve dollars. You say, hold on a second, that doesn't make any sense, right? Because if this is the case, if I know this is the rule, I'm going to bid in the following way. I will bid a huge amount, ridiculously, okay, eighty-five trillion dollars. So I get the item, and then I'll pay the low price by someone else. Well, it turns out that intuition itself is flawed. And it's easy to see why, because you're not the only smart person in the room. You think this way, others think those think so as well. Everybody strategizes at the same time, so nobody is going to bid a ridiculously small bid just so that you can pay that small price. And indeed, actually. We will soon see why second price is a smart arrangement. In particular, it induces truthful bidding that we just talked about briefly. Now, how to prove that it does that? We're going to spend some、uh, ten minutes or so 
very soon. But first, let's finish this quick intro, going from one item to general K item. For example, this is the Google search result page, and on the right panel, there are these, you know, say, three good spots. And the top one, of course, will have a higher click-through rate in general than the second, in turn, than the third. And let's say there are also three buyers, three advertisers. So k equals n in this case it doesn't have to be, but to make it simple for now. And then they will submit bid to Google. The question is, what should the bid look like? Let's say, and we'll come back to justify this in a minute, that they will each submit a single number. Okay, I think they should submit three numbers because there are three things to bid. But let's say they submit one number which they could choose to be the average revenue per click, R, for each one, R1, R2, R3, or they can pick some any other non-truthful bidding strategies. And then Google will say, all right, I got three items, I got three bids from three buyers, respectively. How should I allocate? Now, one way to allocate is to say, well, the highest bidder get the best spot. Second highest bidder get the second best spot. Third highest bidder get the third best spot. That's allocation. Now, how much should I charge it? Well, I trust the belief that the second price is a good one. We'll come to justify that. But let's say for now, that's a good idea. All right, so the first winner will pay the price. Uh, that's the same as the bid from the one below it, the second highest bid. And let me generalize that second price idea to say the second highest uh, buyer will pay the price of the third highest bid. And if there's more than three, you can keep on going like that. So basically, the top advertiser pays the bid that got the other advertisement uh, advertiser the second best spot. The second highest a uh, buyer will pay the price as the bid from the third highest bid and keeps on going like that. So you pay the price coming from the person who got the spot right below you. And this generalizes the second price idea to multiple item, and we indeed give it an intuitive name, generalized second price auction, GSP. And this is the one used by Google. In fact, I think before Google, this one was not seriously um, considered by uh, the auction research community. But since Google started doing that, people started uh, analyzing it. Now the question is, um, does this actually generalize second price? As we just saw, that second price is a wonderful property that it induces truthful bidding. Truthful bidding. So the question is, GSP, does it induce truthful bidding too in the multiple auction, or multiple item auctions? Turns out the answer is no. There are special cases where it does, but generally speaking, GSP does not. So there must be something else uh, going on here. And indeed, if you want to induce truthful bidding, you need something called Vickery Clark Groves VCG auction for multiple items named after three economists. We'll come to the intuition of why second price for single item j induces truth of bidding, but generalize the second price is not the right generalization if you want to keep that property. We'll come to that intuition towards the end of the lecture, and then we will save the VCG details. What is it and why does it induces truth of bidding to the advanced material part of the lecture?